Hello everyone, hello, hello, hello. I'm on here again today. As y'all see, I have more time. All right, so school is officially over for me. And so I've been having time to really catch up on some things that I've been behind on, uh, which is working on simplifying some skills here. Um, working on some things. So I just wanted to share some of the information that I'm discovering. Um, for one, multiplication. Um, for one, multiplication is a big issue. Uh, multiplication is a big issue uh, with our students. When you have eighth graders, when you have eighth graders that are looking in their agendas to determine what the multiplication is, that's an issue, a big issue. When you have seniors in high school when asked what nine times seven is and it takes them a while to think about it, that's an issue. Um, so what I'm doing here today, right now, is to help give you some strategies, um, or a main strategy, to help you be able to teach others, or teach your child, or teach your other students, how to multiply by learning only four of the 12 timetables. Well, really five, because one timetable, y'all, one timetable is one times this is that. So, um, so I really didn't count one, but really the ones, the twos, the five, the tens, and eleven. So really five out of the twelve. So you don't have to really learn the three timetables. You don't really have to learn the four timetables. You don't have to really learn the six times tables, the seven timetables, the eight timetables, the nine timetable. You don't really have to learn that. Why? Because I'm gonna show you today how you can break it down so that they don't have to worry about stressing oh my gosh you know how am i learning nine timetables oh i'm having trouble with it the name of the game now in education especially with math is to break it down all right break it down so i'm going to show you how to break it down with only using the one the two the five the ten and the eleven those are the easiest timetables ever all right, so I'm going to show you how to break it down so that you can teach your child, your grandchildren, your niece, your nephew, um, any other students. You can share this with other people. So please share this out. Um, again, this information is free. All right, that means you can take it or you can leave it. Um, but it's very valuable information that I think while you have the summer, you can work on it, um, especially if you're having trouble with your child or someone you know been having trouble learning how to multiply with the three, the four, the six, seven, eight, nine timetable, especially the sevens, my gosh. <laughs> um, if you've been having trouble, this is a way that could help you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm talking enough. <laughs> All right, so let's look, for example, let's look, let's see, I'm going to just throw out a problem here. Um, let's say I do four times three. All right, that's relatively simple for most of us who know multiplication all right but let's see is there a way that i can break this up into something i already know because remember to education is about using your previous knowledge all right learning what you already know to help you uh complete what you are trying to learn now or what you what your current knowledge should be all right so all right oh i'll have trouble with the four timetables oh i have trouble with the three well how about this do i know the one timetable okay yeah i could but can i break it out into something more than that yeah let's try the two timetable all right two times table so we can break four times three into four times two all right plus four times one because when you um because when you add these together, they should be three. All right. So four times two, that's going to be eight. Plus four times one is four. Well, eight plus four is what? Twelve. Well, four times three is twelve. Is that not right? That's a simple way to do it. All right. So I don't know my four time table. I have a trouble with four times three. I cannot remember. Oh, I'm having trouble. I can't remember. I've been working on it for a long time. But let's see, can I break four times three down into my two timetables? Yes, I can. And that's what we did. We kept the four because the four is the timetable that we're working on. Um, the four is a larger number here. So we're going to break the three down into what we already know. 
2. 4 times 2 is 8. 2 time table. We know the 2 and the 1 time tables. We know that. All right, so 4 times 2 is 2. I mean, excuse me, 4 times 2 is 8. And then 4 times 1 is 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. Let's do another example. And again, if you have any questions, uh, Therese, I see you. Hello, Wayne. Uh, Miss Altman. Oh, nice to see you, Miss Altman. Um, and Miss Dunlap. Good to see you all. Just trying to um, help with, you know, we have a large disparity in uh, discrepancies, uh, excuse me, deficiencies in math. So I'm just trying to share some videos out today that's going to help um, while the students are home. Hopefully their parents will take a moment to try to help them with some academics as well, not just let them do what they want to do. All right, so let's look at another example. Uh, let's say eight times, let's say six. Oh gosh, how many times I see students struggle with eight times six? Oh gosh, they, they, they have trouble with it. Well, let's see. Hmm, how can I break this down? Well, I don't know my eight time table. I have trouble with the six times tables. All right, so let's see. Well, can we try five? Yeah, we can try five. All right. So that means if I know my five time tables, I can do five times, I can do five times eight, all right? Or I can do five times six, all right? So if I do five times six, that's going to be 30, all right? Now, the question is, well, how are we going to get the rest of it? Well, we have the six. The six day is consistent. But now we have to say, okay, now, if I have 5 here, how do I get the 8? Well, I have to have a 3. So if I add these two together, I should get 8. So that's going to be 3 times 6, which is 18. And if I add those two together, I get 48. All right, so this is an easier way. There's going to be a constant. There's going to be one number that stays the same. All right, the 6 stays the same. All right. Or I could have done this, the 8 could have stayed the same. Either, one, either way, one of the numbers is going to stay the same. All right? So let me just show you right quick. Y'all see this? You know, that's 48. So 8 times 6 is equal to 5 times 6 plus 3 times 6. And some people may call this common core. Well, this is not really common core because um, this is more of a logical way to do it. Usually common core has a roundabout way to do it, um, which makes it more complicated. Now... One thing I do love about Common Core is that it does cause you to think. A lot of students are not thinking, so we have to get them to that point where they're thinking. So this is something, yes, it will get them to thinking, but I don't think it's to the point where we would say this is Common Core-like. All right, so again, 8 times 6, we break that down into 5 times 6 and 3 times 6, because 5 times 6 is 30, 3 times 6 is 18, Add those together to get 48. Now, let me show you what would happen if I actually decided to do an 8 here. So, if, I, if this was the 8, the 8 stays constant. But now, i got to add the two numbers to be 6. So, now let's look at it. So, if I do that, so you can do either one. I'm just showing you either one will work. All right? Um, hello, Ms. Uh, Galashaw and Kim and um, Jawaltney. Good to see you all. All right, so 8 times 5 is 40. And then plus 1 times 8, that's 8. Well, guess what? We still get 48. So you can do it either way. You can either say 6 is going to stay constant, 8 is going to stay constant. But the thing is, if I use the 5 timetables, that means that the 5 timetable, when I add the 5 plus uh, this number, it has to be equal to either the 6 or has to be either equal to the 8, whichever one you choose. So if the 8 is constant, it has to add to be 6. If the 6 is going to be constant, it has to add to be 8. All right? So let's do another example. Um, we use the 5 timetables out. Yes, let's use it. Let's go to the 12s. Let's go to the 12 timetables. All right? The 12 timetables, a lot of students, are like, oh, gosh, 12s. You know, they, they freak out about the 12s. All right, so let's look at 12 times. Let's do 12 times 9. Oh, some students already freak out. Oh, I don't know how to do that. All right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break it down. All right? So 12 times 9. All right? Remember, one of them needs to stay constant. All right? So, if I do 9, let's see. Well, if I'm thinking about my timetables, well, 11 timetable is right next to 12. So, how about break down this down into 11 times 9 plus 11, um, excuse me, 
plus 1 times 9. All right, so that's going to be 99 plus 9, which would be equal to 108. Or well, isn't 12 times 9 equal to 108? Yes, it is. Same exact thing. All right. Hello, Miss Jackson and Mr. Myers and um, Anthony. Good to see you all. All right, so this is the easy way. Again, you can choose either way. You can choose either number to be constant. All right, if it's going to be the 9, then it's going to be the 9. So let's say the 12 is going to be constant this time. All right. So if the 12 is going to be constant, that means that, and I like to kind of keep it, um, the last problem I didn't do that, but I'm trying to keep it where, um, I can just erase this. All right, so we're going to try to keep it constant where the bigger number, the number that is going to stay constant is going to stay in the same, same row, either the top or the bottom. All right, so now that means that now if 12 is going to stay constant, that means that we have to change this to something that we know. Hmm, well, we can do 5. All right, 12 times 5, 5 timetables. Of course, we 5 timetables the easiest, one of the easiest timetables. All right, so that's going to be 12 times 5 over 12. And then, of course, this has to be equal to 9. So 5 plus what is 9? Well, that's going to be 4. So now 12 times 5 is 60. And I know this may not work for all students. I know, you know, some people see this, they're going to say, well, that's not going to work for every student. Of course, nothing works for every student. But this is like another alternative that you can have in your bag of tricks, so to speak. All right. This is the use for those that might say, you know what, I don't understand that way. But, oh, that's easy. And then some people say, this is hard, but it might find the other way easy. So you have to, as a teacher, you have to be able to, um, you have to, be able to determine, okay, if this student understands this, let me throw something else out here and see if they can understand that. All right. So, so here we got 12 times 5. Um, did I mean to do this? Now this one, we could break this one up into two. Um, I didn't test with that one. But it's still the same thing. You can break it up so that you can only deal with it. It's almost like um, prime factorization in a sense. Almost like. All right, so 12 times 2 is 24. And then 24, well, we know if we add all these together, I mean, they know how to add. Well, yeah, they know how to add, so... Um, they should be able to add these together and see now 60 plus 24, that's 84, and then that's going to be 108. So the, th the, the, the concept is to keep it to the one timetables, the two timetables, the five timetables, the 10 and 11s. The 1, 2, 5, 10, and 11. That's the goal. Is that these numbers here, it's almost like prime factorization, like I say, you want 2, 3, 5, or 7. In this case, I want 1, 2, 5, 10, or 11. 1, 2, 5, 10, or 11. All right, so this is 108. Um, and again, I know that this method may not work for every single student, but I have never seen this method done before. Um, if it's been done, I didn't see it. But I think it will be an addition that we could use um, when we are using our, in our instruction as math teachers um, and for those that do pullouts in small groups. All right, we're going to do one more example. I want to use one using the... Uh, well, basically, I done did the fives, the twos, the elevens. Let's do one using the tens. All right, so let's say, well, that's going to be kind of, um, let's try 12. That's still going to be 11. Um, really, the tens probably not going to be used. Um, let's try another example what I got here. Let's see. Let's do nine times seven. Nine times seven. This is one that a lot of students have trouble with, too. Nine times seven. So most of you probably going to break it down to it's going to be 1, 5, 1, 2, 5, and 11 because 10 is right next to 11. So um, so let's break this down. All right. 9 times 7. Oh, I'm having trouble with that. I'm having trouble with this for the last two weeks. Oh, gosh, I'm going to do this. All right. So break it down. What do I know? Well, the next closest one would be 5. So I can break this down into 5. All right. Now. Remember, one number has to stay constant. So if we keep the 7 constant, we know that's going to be like that. Oh, not fractions yet. <laughs> no, we're going to add on that. All right, so that means that this is 5. This has to be added to 9, so that's going to be 4. So now we take 5 times 7 is 35, plus 4 times 7 is 28. All right, and then, of course, we add those two, we get 63. And that is correct. 
all right that's how we do that so basically what I wanted to do um, and what I've done is to sit down and take some time to see how we can help these students who are struggling especially these like I say those who have learning disabilities um, if we're able to take as math teachers be able to take time out and just kind of play with some things just to see how they work and I just all I did I sat down and said okay what I, what will work what is something that we can break down that might can work I know it may not work the first time it may not work the second time it may not work the third time and it never work for some students but then again if I get them to working in that process and getting them to start thinking they be like oh I see what's happening alright okay now I got it I, it was hard for me to do it this way but when I broke it down it's almost like partial um, partial fraction well not partial fraction partial um, division like we do division um, partial products partial quotients um, so it's to help break those things down so that those who have those learning blockages, uh, blockages or learning disabilities they'll be able to understand possibly give them a better chance of being successful and understanding what they're doing a lot of times students are able to divide because they have trouble multiplying all right so what if I don't get it in two seconds all right I want students to get in about three seconds but if a student can show me that they know how to get it that's all that matters and that's that's what that's what I'm restructuring my mindset to say okay can you show me the process of what you did so that I know that you know what to do and you can master it that's all that's what it's about now it's not about how quick I do it um, you don't want to take all day doing it but you know the more you practice it you should get better with it but we got to get to the point where we look at the process rather than look at how quick they're doing something so I just want to encourage you um, just share this out to math teachers especially um, middle school high school whoever because like I said we got a whole range of students that need it um, please share it out you know if you have any questions comments about uh, maybe you forget how to do it or if you want to go back and look at it anybody else have questions just let me know um, but this is G Burgess Education Consulting LLC um, I do have a page on Facebook if you like that page and I'll be posting different videos there so um, stay tuned to that page um, but if you ever have a question about any concept that you might want me to work on breaking it down um, just let me know and I'll be I'll be willing to work on that um, and see what I can do to help you alright so thank you all for tuning in um, tune in you see me go live again hey come on in and um, just see what else I have to offer for you alright Take care. Be blessed.